think it's Monday morning. I uh, hope you got to be in church yesterday and uh, to worship the Lord. It's uh, always uh, awesome to be able to come with fellow believers. You know, we, we worship ourselves. I, I love to sing in my car, or, you know, my office. Worship and by ourselves. Worship by ourselves. We're but, not uh, worshiping ourselves. Not worshiping ourselves, <laughs> right. Of course not. But um, it's, uh, it's different when you come together corporately. And I think that's why that's right. Hebrews 10 says that uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. It's so important to be able to come together and encourage one another and to worship God together. Yes. You know, Lord, so, if it wasn't, the Lord amen. wouldn't have said that. Amen. Wouldn't. Well, I'm going to give you a little bit different title and a little different thing this morning. And I've entitled this, When God is Silent. And uh, in John, um, I'm just going to share a scripture. You can go back and read it later. But it's John 11, uh, 1 through 44. And it's about Lazarus. And Lazarus uh, is sick. And Mary and Martha, they get word to Jesus, and um, and Jesus tarries where he is, and I'm sure they send word to him again. He's getting really bad. Um, won't you come? And Jesus continued to tarry, and then finally they sent him word that he has died. And, you know, I think sometimes we feel that way when we pray and we don't see an answer. We feel like them many times. And, uh, and I know Jesus showed up and he said, you know, this is for the glory of God. But they felt like their prayers weren't being answered when, uh, when God wasn't speaking to them. And it seems that if the Lord doesn't intervene soon, then the very thing that we dread uh, is going to happen. And, and to be honest with you, we feel like he doesn't care. You know, are you listening? Are you hearing what I'm praying? You know. And yet the word of God tells us in 1 Peter 5, give all your worries or cares to the Lord for he cares for you. And and we, we do that. Well, you know, so much of the time we think God uh, is not answering our prayer when in essence he may have answered it. He may be using someone else to bring the answer to you. Yes. And maybe that person's not listening. That's what we have to be aware of. I think the thing is, we get into fervent prayer, like for them, it was the lot, they didn't want their brother to die. Yeah. Of course, you're going to be fervently praying, but the scripture says, by his stripes, he's healed. Yeah. So when you pray that, you've got to believe it and not keep begging, not keep doing things like that. Sometimes we we stop the answer to God's prayer by yeah. what we're saying, don't yes, you think? Yes, I, I, I agree with that uh, uh, very, very much because I think what we do is, uh, if uh, if... Well, let's see. Let's go back to the Old Testament for just a moment because in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel prayed to get an understanding and he got no response. He thought. Yeah, that's right. He thought he got no response. And so then uh, uh, this angel come, the angel Gabriel comes to him and said, no, he said, uh, and this was like 21 days later, you know, he said, no. Um, he said, Did God heard you not in the week that you prayed, not in the day that you prayed, but he said he heard you the moment you Amen. spoke the words. Amen. So this is what you have to understand, that God is God's hearing you, but many times there are things in the spiritual realm that have to be changed or moved around uh, if that's God's will for it to bring that to pass, okay? It, it aligns with the word. Right. God it aligns with the word. When it, your prayer is aligned with the word of God, he's in move. And he's that's his move. will. That's, that's his, his will. will. Yeah. He's moving. Right, he his word. We keep saying to people, keep you saying, well, what is his will? His word is his will, okay? Right. It's called his last, it's called the New Testament, his will and testament, right? And so, but with Daniel, there was, there were evil demonic forces that were keeping that answer from coming, you know, yeah. but and God you know gives what? it. When we look at this story, of course, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead yeah. and he says it's to be, bring glory to God and to, to his son. But you know, what we need to realize is that these folks don't have what we no, have. No, they didn't. They had nothing no. like we had. No. They had Jesus, greatest thing of yeah. all you could have. But Jesus said, I'm going to give you this power yep. and greater work shall you do than I can do. Yep. And what he meant was he's spreading it out throughout the whole yep. body of Christ. And you and I, when we pray, we don't need to give up. We don't need to get down. We don't need to get upset at God because the answer is not when we want yep. it to be there. You know, another thing, God's timing is perfect. Yes, it is. Don't give up yep. your prayers. 
trust him, believe in him. Just like we've talked about yes, the we truth have. of the word. The well, word says it will come to pass. Yes. It will come to pass. Yes, it will. If you do not falter or fall away or question God, just speak his word, believe his word, and move forward. You, you and I said this the other day, that what we see a lot of times is people engage in battle to stand on the word, to believe God's word. And yet, if it's not answered in just a very short period of time, they disengage. That's you know, right. and they then they go, saying, "Wait a minute, oh God, you didn't hear my guess, prayer." What's yeah, you didn't want to heal me. You didn't want to do this for me. And you've got to stay engaged Amen. in that. In that, Amen. Amen. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about this this week. God bless you. We love you. You have a blessed day today. Amen.